that butt kiss award. It was awesome. Um, in my like young football career, probably one of the most special moments that I've had on the grass. It was just, uh, it was so cool just to see his response. And um, as we all know, he's just so uh, well deserving of the award. And, um, just an amazing human being, and, and man, it's been a, it's been an honor to coach him, uh, and it was an honor to be there and to witness that in school. We only saw a little bit of the video. How did that all come together at the beginning? Did he kind of surprise everyone or take about kiss? Yeah, we had uh, we'd been told a couple of days prior that that it was happening, you know, and, and I'm not very good at keeping secrets, <laughs> although I did amazingly <laughs> enough. And uh, so we all we're all kind of on the road uh, recruiting it as of right now, and. But Coach Moore made sure that I got back here for it. So I flew back in, um, had a little light morning workout, and, and then uh, Coach Losey brought him up and had, on, had him on a knee and, and uh, had their back to that gate, you know. And, uh, and as he starts talking, the gate opens, and here comes, here comes Dick Buckus, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm just peeking over. I'm, just, I'm watching EK, and EK sees him. And you, I mean, it was just uh, it was so cool. It was so cool for her. For him, his family, and, and you know all that he stood for, and, and just what what a great way to be recognized. You know, did it make it more special given that he'd been overlooked in these postseason awards for a while now? Um, yeah, you know, it, it it's one of those few awards. You know, I think there's a lot of awards out there that are based upon uh, maybe you know the hype, you know, the the splash plays, the Sports Center plays, all that stuff. Where this one is. You know, you look at the, the, the guys that are on this um, evaluation committee, and, and it's real guys, real football players, linebackers, guys that understand the position, understand defense at a high level, and, and uh, they understand it's, it, it's being consistent. It's showing up every day. It's, it's being that same guy, and, uh, and EK embodies all that. When you – go ahead. Is that something you've already been able to kind of talk to some recruits about, the Butkus Award, some of your linebacker recruits? Um, I, I, yeah, but I don't, I don't even know what I can, what, I can't say names. I can't say anything, right? I can't say names. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it doesn't hurt recruiting for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cool. You know, the, the guys have really started to, uh, to, to create a tradition here, you know, of, of, uh, of excellence at the linebacker position. Um, having a, a number nine pick overall and a potential rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year. And then to have EK back that up with a buck is, is um, they take a lot of pride in that, and it's, and it's cool to see. You got some flack a couple of years ago with the Facebook post with the linebacker you. Does that? I work? took, I think, I don't know how that occurred, <laughs> you know? Someone said it, right? And I think it was Penn State fans got really upset. That you well, did. somebody said it, right? Okay. I don't know who said it. Hmm. And it's something that they, they, right. they, that was kind of private amongst them and themselves, and, and I don't know how that went public. And, <laughs> yeah, and then the fans started blasting the players, you know? <laughs> So as a coach, that was my opportunity to stand up for them. And, you know, I think what they, they take pride in is the here and now. You know, a lot of people try to cling to tradition. They cling to the past. They cling to what was. And uh, our guys are trying to start something now, you know, today. And, uh, and they're putting their, their, you know, I mean, they're, they're doing it. You know, they're making, a, making an argument for that. So it's, you know, it's fun to be a part of it. This, this being your first year as defensive coordinator, how do you kind of look back and self-evaluate how these, right. these first 12 games have gone at least? Yeah, I, it was definitely a learning process, you know. Um, uh, came in early and, and, uh, and thought we could be very, very simple. And then, and then I just, as we went, just gave them more and more as they could grasp more and gave them more, more tools and more answers. And, and they, um, they embraced that and, and they... they they enjoyed that kind of things being on their terms a little bit more, and and uh, yeah, so they grew, I grew. It was uh, it was fun. Unfortunately, it didn't end the way you know. At least the regular season didn't end the way we, we wanted it to. But uh, we got a great opportunity in this bowl game. You know, got a great opponent. Um, it's going to be a a great challenge. You know, I've I've watched them briefly now, and and uh, they pose a lot of challenges for a defense. Did it take a little bit longer maybe to click with what you wanted to do than you would have initially expected coming in, kind of not knowing the ropes in terms of being a defensive coordinator? Yeah, it was, it, it was a deal where, um, you know, obviously Coach Mora has an enormous influence on, on me defensively. And uh, so would guys like Dan Quinn, who's up in Seattle now. And, and, 
guys that I've been around a lot and their philosophy regarding um, scheme and, and calling a game is, uh, you know, always put the game in the player's hands, you know, keep it simple, uh, be great with fundamentals and, and uh, technique and alignment assignment, let them know it and understand it at a, at a high level so they can play fast and physical. Um, the problem is in college football, it's a little different because you're seeing so much exotic stuff on offense um, that you almost have to, you almost have to uh, balance that with being exotic in your own right at times just to, to, to keep them off balance, mm-hmm. you know, and I kind of, you know, I felt like we gained a better understanding, or I did, I gained a better understanding of that as the season went on, and, and uh, yeah, I think we're only going to get better as a group now. Was there a game where it really clicked? Like, I know Arizona was kind of the one, just when you look at the scores, it seems like that's where the defense kind of showed up. But was it before then, or was that the I felt second, like, this right? might sound crazy to you guys, but um, it really started that Utah game. Now, prior to that, that rascal that came, that quarterback, <laughs> man, prior to that, that mobile guy coming in, we were playing at a high level, you know, and they were, were mixing it up, and we were doing really well, and um, Obviously, we, we, we had trouble with the mobile guy that came in. And, um, but I felt like that was kind of the turning point of the season for us defensively and guys starting to grasp things and us become a little bit more complex. Hmm. Obviously, replacing Anthony was a huge, right. you know, something you guys had to work on all year. How difficult do you anticipate it's going to be to replace EK in the middle? Just as difficult. You know, but that's, that's, that's awesome. That means we're doing something right. When you're saying it's going to be so difficult to replace a guy, it means we, um, it hopefully means that we developed a guy. You know, we made a guy special, you know, or helped him become special. You know, so it's, uh, it should be that way every year. You know, we should always have that conversation. You know, how are you going to place, replace Miles? And how are you going to replace Kenny Young? And then how are you going to place, you know, that you want that conversation. Otherwise, you're not doing it right, you know. So it's, it's going to be extremely difficult. You know, he's obviously, what you see on the field is, is obvious. But, you know, behind the scenes in the meeting rooms, his leadership in the locker room, it's, uh, it's going to be hard to replace. How do you think you guys did replace AB's production? It was kind of by committee, you know. It was, it, it's a deal where uh, in the past couple of years, we, didn't even, we never brought pressure. We didn't have to bring pressure because you could bring forward. And Anthony was so dominant as a rusher, you know. So um, we've been very simple in a lot of ways. And, uh, but we were still, you know, getting great pressure on the quarterback and our, and our sacks were up and all that stuff. And, you know, you had a guy like Cassius too, which, mm-hmm. you know, people forget about him sometimes. But Cash is an amazing pass rusher, very disruptive. Keenan Graham, I think, had seven sacks his senior <laughs> year. I mean, you had three guys with just crazy sack production that, were, that they weren't getting it. It's stunting them or blitzing them. They, they were just getting it with four-man rushes. You know, so to replace those, th- those three guys was – it was difficult, you know, and we had to um, we had to do some different things schematically. But as the season kind of wore on, I thought our guys uh, um, there's some guys that really stepped up regarding rushing the passer. Dion, I thought the addition of Tack was was huge for us. Um, I think Oa finally really came into his own, started just playing uh, at a very high level. Um, the interior guys were playing well. Uh, yeah, so you know I, those guys will only get better. All those guys come back, you know, minus Oa. So. <coughs> We can we can build from that. Mm-hmm. What's the plan with a guy like Tack? Is he going to be more of a you know bulk him up, be a little bit more like Oa, or be more like a you know Anthony outside linebacker? We'll see. Player? You know, the, he's one of those guys where um, you know the, the Contra Costa County they, they they work hard and and they have a great strength and conditioning program. Um, Coach Losi though is just in in my mind one of the best, if not the best, strength and conditioning coach in the business right now, and. Uh, you know, so it'll be interesting to see how his body responds to, to Coach Elosi. Um, I mean, he could become that close side end Oa type guy. Um, but at the same time, if he doesn't put that type of weight on, uh, he's got the athleticism to play outside backer. So, you know, I think we'll kind of let his, his body let us know where he's going to go. As part of the staff, when you hear Jim's name inevitably come up for, you know, random open jobs mm-hmm. across college football, is that something you guys just kind of laugh off? I don't, I, honestly, I don't listen to it, you know. People always sending me texts, so uh, how's Ann Arbor? Like, you know, <laughs> shooting like little pictures, screenshots of, you know, the weather at different places. And, um, yeah, I don't pay any attention to it, you know. I, I'm convinced that, that, that Coach Moore is, you know, he is, uh, he loves it here. You know, he loves it here. He loves this program. He loves the kids that we've assembled. Um, he loves the direction that, that we're going. Uh, I think that uh, I think he's in it for the long haul. I really do. You know, he's 
He's built a beautiful home down in Manhattan Beach. Doesn't look like he has any intention of leaving that. You know, and plus his, his kids, you know, have, have stayed here close to go to school locally to, to be together and, and to be with him. So, um, so it, everything would indicate to me that he's staying, you know, and, and uh, yeah, we're excited about that. I can say from experience, the weather in Michigan right now is not yeah. not great. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. Although it's today, raining, it's, yeah. yeah, 